This episode of the T4 Show is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com forward slash GFQ. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the T4 Show, episode number 137 for April 8th. 2013 and as you can see i am not in the studio uh we made a mad dash we took about a half hour delay uh there's an internet problem and i sat on a cat and there's a cat condo next to me other than that everything is perfect i know that doesn't make any sense but that's the way the last half hour has gone and you see i have a thing where i bounce my leg too so if the video on this goes a little shaky i bounce my leg uh, while I sit down, which everybody in the living room complains about. But we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about big news today, and we're going to get to that. But first of all, let's talk to my co-host and partner, Colm. I, yeah, I Hello, think of, everyone. It's an interesting to introduction than that. I was trying to think of it, but yeah, I'm so disheveled from moving back and forth. How are you, Colm? I'm doing excellent today. Uh, the, uh, I want to. I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit and give myself my own little plug. Is tomorrow, the 9th of April marks the one year anniversary of when I founded my business, J Maverick Design. And Boom. how's that go? It's going great. I couldn't be happier with my move. So, I made it one whole year. Thank you. I wish you would take those belts down. They're so distracting. What was wrong with those? That was given. First of all, I bought that one myself, and the other one my wife gave me as a birthday present. You want me to take that down? My yes. wife watched yeah, yeah, the match yeah, I do. last I night. Do. By yeah. the way. I think her wife is great. I think that was a very dumb decision, a very dumb purchase on her part. But okay. I just, you know, and I, I am, I am soaked with sweat. Andrew Zarian's here, the owner of GFQ Network. He's a he's a big internet star in Alcolm. I didn't know if you knew that. I He's heard something about news. that. Huge, huge internet star. I'm There's his video. Over. He's got There's, video. I have video too. now too. We're all. I'm but watching. I mean, I'm actually watching one of my neighbors die in front of, across the street. So this is very sorry. entertaining for me. <laughs> wow. It's hey been, Andrew, do you know what the next PS5 is going to be when it comes out? Yeah. Do you want me to just start making stuff up at this point because I can, and I, it'll be very close to what's really going to happen. Well, I'm awaiting a call though from Paul Thorat. Uh, yeah. At any time, he's going to tell me what the next iPhone 5S. So Heard. look forward to that later in the show. We're, we're going to stop it right there excited. because we, we, we are. It's actually a small miracle that the show is airing video and audio today because of the internet problems. So let's try to just get what off happened? of uh, people, people dying and sitting on cats and all the other stuff that I talked about in the beginning. And uh, let's open up, not with the biggest store, but I want to give everybody an update on my straight talk experiment videos. Uh, I did day one. I did not activate the straight talk service until this past Saturday, but I have to say, Colm and Andrew, I'm pretty impressed with the way uh, straight talk has worked for me data wise and voice wise, especially using not the Lumia 820, but using the Nexus 4 that Colm was nice enough to send me. I'm really impressed with straight talk and hopefully continue to get impressed and save 50% off my cell phone bill over at and So it's official. You did it. It's done. It's in, in your no, no, Nexus it's not 4. Quite official. No, it's not quite official. Not quite That's, official. No, I, I got another number. I talked last week about how yeah. I was going to possibly port over my cell phone number, which I currently right. have on the iPhone 4S, and right. make that my front-facing number. And then whatever number I pick for Straight Talk, T-Mobile, Uncarrier Plans, Net 10, Simple Mobile. I could pretty much go from carrier to carrier, but still have that forward-facing Google Voice number. But of course, I thought you took out the 4S chip and put it no, in no, the no. 4. I did not use, no, I compared. What I did was, and I'm going to do a video today, I put okay. the Straight Talk SIM in the Nexus 4, and I still have the AT&T SIM, micro SIM, I should say, in the iPhone 4S, and I was doing data tests. And I think there's something wrong with the 4S. This is going on two years old, I'm sure. The Wi-Fi seems weaker. It doesn't have the 5 gigahertz network like the Nexus 4 anyway. Uh, but even on HSPA Plus speeds, I'm getting better speeds on the Nexus 4 than the iPhone 4S. Really? Yeah. The only thing I, I don't understand is I'm getting data, 
I'm downloading stuff. I downloaded podcasts. I downloaded uh, or I stream YouTube videos. I did all that stuff. But when I open up the speed test app, I'm getting nothing. And it tries to, to ping a server somewhere in Kansas. I can't auto locate uh, anything in Florida. So it's kind of weird uh, there. Oh, and I did. Wait, which is that the Nexus 4 that does that? Yes. I, I know why it does that. Because that's where Google Kansas is, or is that why? Yeah, because of the whole, you know, it might be rooted type of deal. Unlocked. Uh. <laughs> Wait, oh, you rooted, you rooted the phone? Yes, I did. Okay, what, what Before ROM, that date. What, what Wait, ROM so did you put on it? This is all your fault. This is your fault no, again. No, this is what I... I this is what he does, Michael. And I, and what, I, what do you mean this is what I do? He does this all the time. He gets a brand new phone. He roots it, and he breaks it for about half the day. And then he goes in this frantic panic on how to fix it. And he sends it to me. Yeah, and after. I always succeed. Well, he's having a problem now, isn't he? No, he's not. It's not I didn't know people cared about location uh, One thing I could tell you, Michael, is that once you root that phone, you have to constantly update the ROMs. Yes. Once you put a ROM probably. on there, you, you constantly have to put a new ROM. So you, you should start looking into the ROMs and, and, and what's going to work best for you. Because I have a, a Galaxy uh, Nexus here, and um, I, I had a great ROM on this, and the guy just stopped doing the ROM. He, he switched over to an iPhone and just stopped developing. But I found another one, and they release updates every, every month or so. So I have to constantly update the ROM on this thing. So what ROM am I running, Colm? What have you not told me about this Nexus 4? He doesn't even you know. Have, you have to go to settings about this phone. I don't remember the exact name, but it was like a, the oh. basic one. The it basic? Was like the basic. Is that the official yeah. name? The basic ROM? <laughs> I don't remember the actual name. Well, despite what Calm has done to this phone to, to make it work very... Uh, you, d despite what he's done to cripple the phone, it runs very well. I have to say I prefer the Nexus 4 over the Galaxy Note 2. I really do. I really? think it's wow. I never thought I thought the Note 2 with TouchWiz, the new TouchWiz, right. and the S10 right. and all the features would enable me to say, well, vanilla Android's too boring or anything. But man, it's so seamless, it's fast. Uh, Which keyboard the, are you um, using? Uh Swift Key. Yeah. Okay. Very good keyboard. Much right. better. I, yes. I thought swipe was the best one, but Swift Key oh, is much better. I use Swift Key Swipe. It's, a, Swift, it's Swift, key, Swift Key now always has swipe on there. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Then I use Swift Key. Then I love Swift Key. Like I can't, but no, that's. I mean, I love it, but I'm running Samsung's one on this because I like that one better. If that so, makes sense. All right. So is there an official sway? You're confusing me already. All right, that's like it's saying, so weird. Like there's an official one, and then there's. I think you're using the one that's the same one I'm using. I think it's just called Swipe. No, I use Swift Key. It's a completely different application, a completely different company. Right. When you Andrew? type, do you go like this? No, SwiftKey now, uh, oh, the latest version of SwiftKey has swipe enabled. So you yes. could swipe to r type or you could you could just, you know, type like a normal person. What, a normal person? Yeah. Listen, I can't type like b b hunt and peck. Well, we also I know you can't you can't leave a phone alone. I this yeah. is impossible to type on now. This we know, is like No, so you can't. No, you can't restore an Android phone to default settings before you send it to your best friend. We know that right now. So so uh, I erased all my data. Awful, Colm. I forgot oh. about that. It's not a big deal. I didn't think it'd be a big I'm deal. I'm sure people people don't want to hear us bicker, but they're probably going to have to put up with it for the rest of episode 137. But anyway, straight talk is very uh besides the fact that I'm scared about the throttling or even the cutting off of service if I over go over the two gigs of data. The Android has a nice little feature in the settings right. where you can okay. actually cap your data usage or track it at least. I, I, I find it very attractive. After this 30 days, I know I'm going to try the T-Mobile, either the $30 plan and use something like Talkatone or Groove IP to make my voice calls so I don't use minutes. Or I might tr just go and try the $70 a month plan would unlimited everything and see how the data speeds are, the data coverage, and, of course, the voice coverage. Uh, but for now, I have to say, after just a couple of days of using Straight Talk, uh, my girlfriend uses Straight Talk, too. And outside of changing the APA, APN settings from time to time, it's, it's worked pretty flawlessly off the uh, AT&T network. So, so far, I highly recommend it. That's great to hear. I mean, you've been talking about that. I, I, I would say maybe a year and a half we've been talking about it. And yeah. you've always just been, I mean, it, 
scares me. Like, I was waiting to hear if you did it. Like, if it works, like, as good as you're saying, then it's very interesting. One point, one point that I heard from people that were commenting on Twitter uh, when I put up how impressed I was with Straight Talking to Nexus 4, somebody had said that somehow AT&T can cripple the data speeds uh, somehow or at least lower them on branded phones. And the fact that I have a Nexus 4 unlocked makes it to where I can get better speeds than my 4S. That was the answer to what I told you about the, you the better speeds on straight talk. So uh, you kind of want to buy an unlocked phone anyway, so you make sure you can go from AT&T to T-Mobile or even the prepaid See, option. I did that for you. The phone was unlocked before you touched it. It's a Pentaban unlocked phone. <laughs> he doesn't even know what he did. Now you're taking credit for what Google did before you even got the phone. That's no, okay. I was told after you do whatever the little magic thing, you then there it shows a lock on the screen. That means you did no, it. No, you rooted the phone and then you you put a ROM on there. Yeah, that's what I did. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, when I I don't even know what to say. I'm so. <laughs> this, <laughs> hey, listen to this. The only thing that can your, save this, you Andrew, can watch Tampa Bay games. No the problem. Only, Stop watching baseball. You have to save this episode, Andrew. Please start by giving us your uh, BlackBerry Z10 review, which shocked me when you were texting back and forth with me earlier this week uh, or weekend and then before last week. Uh, you told me how much you actually liked the phone over Android. I really, really like this phone. Um, I, I have it right here, uh, the BlackBerry Z10, and I've been using it for about, little over a week now, because I believe I got it yes, last, exactly last week. Uh, and I was trying to use it on the show, but the battery was dead, and I had to charge this thing for like a couple hours. But uh, I absolutely love the operating system. I think it, it's, it's very refined. It doesn't feel like a version 1 operating system. Very easy to use. I like how um, the notifications is like a little hub with all the notifications on the side. Uh, I'm very happy the camera single-handedly is what makes the phone for me I'm, I'm i agree with him on that i'm huge on on cameras on these phones i've i've been a huge critic of all these android phones with awful cameras on them and i've always said there's nothing that comes really close to the iphone and i have to tell you this camera comes uh, into a very close second i think in my opinion uh and i haven't done a side by side yet with these two phones but i think this is a better camera than the iphone 4s uh almost to the level of the iPhone 5. I mean, really, really close. You're, you're, you're really splitting hairs at that point. But one thing that it does really well is aperture. So it's able to kind of focus in on whatever the subject is and blur the background out. And you could do some phenomenal, you could take some phenomenal photos with this thing. Um, I, I took a couple photos uh, at, when I was at the bar over the weekend and uh, man, it looks nice. And maybe Did I'll pull you, it up on the, on the screen if you guys want to see it. Yeah. I had a question yeah. about it is that, that you didn't take any pictures and switch it to that macro mode that I hear that everyone's talking about. No, did you? I, no, no, no. I haven't used the macro mode. You really need to. Cause everyone's saying that is really impressive. Uh, what is it doing? Well, it like really opens up the aperture when you get close in on something. So you get really clear and it lets a lot of light in on when real close up. But you have to set it on the phone. No, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll pull up a couple pictures in a couple okay. minutes. But, Michael, I really, really like this phone. Really it, good. It's such like an iPhone, though. Be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like an iPhone. It, it kind of resembles an iPhone. But I don't, doesn't every phone at this point, doesn't everybody, mm -hmm. everything look like an iPhone? I'm going to read uh, right now because we're talking about the camera, and I'm very curious about the other features on this phone, but I'm going to CrackBerry.com for the camera specifications, and I'm just going to read it off. By the way, says, thanks to guys at, at CrackBerry because uh, somebody posted uh, my review of it over there, and they were really kind to me. I'm like the yeah, Microsoft good people. Good guys. They Kevin's didn't call you like David Copperfield or anything? No, they were very nice to me. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the BlackBerry Z10 has a third inch 8, meg 8 megapixel backside illumination sensor with 1.4 micrometer pixels uh, that's capable of shooting 1080p video. Autofocus is available alongside touch to focus, which is enabled by dragging the UI target to where you want to focus. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's a 5x digital zoom using super resolution technology, with monitors, which monitors shifts and activity of the sub pixel level. To eliminate blur, an LED light enables continuous or flash illumination. Uh, the camera has a five-element. Here we here we go. F-stop, 
2.2 lens with a four millimeter right. focal length. Now, Colm, you should know more about that than me. Right. Uh, it includes a hybrid IR cut filter to make sure infrared rays dedicated uh, don't screw with your picture, though it can make pictures a little cool colored. Uh, there's also a dedicated image signal processor with a 64 meg frame buffer, which keeps the live image on the display true and up to date relative to what yeah, the camera great. is pointing at. And um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things at crackberry.com. If you just search there for the Z10, uh, the camera, they go and I mean, it's in a whole post with photo comparisons uh, on photos and videos. This has to be at least uh, Simon put this up. So thank you, Simon. Uh, Simon seems like he gave such a detailed look. There's so much to this camera. Uh, and we don't even know anything about the iPhone camera. It's just magic. That's They don't really give this sort of level of specification. And I, I, don't, I don't know. It, this, this, this phone tempts me now that you like it, Andrew. It really does. Here's a, uh, here are a couple sample pictures of the camera. Uh, as you can see, I mean, it really blurs at the back and really focuses on the on the glass. Yeah, of beer see there. what it does there. How it really shows you the bubbles of the beer. That is so yeah. good. And then here's another. This is in very low lighting, by the way. Very low lighting. Uh, it was it was really dim the bar. Let me ask you a question about that. Can you set the aperture on the or is it or is it defaulted on two point two and it's always going to be that? Um, I I didn't set anything. I just it's all set to auto and I just went in that way. What I mean I've is heard you can control it. Though. You, you can. can. Control sure. Yeah, you can. All right, so why don't, why don't we why don't we look into it? Um, I got it right here. Let me go into it's, the camera. It's definitely. I mean, while he looks that up, it's definitely of spec wise, it's doing the job of a camera that we're looking for. It seems to me that's like you and me, Michael, have this conversation about like it's always goes back to this camera. It's going always going back. The reason, main reason I sent you back that Nexus 4 is because I want to have this back in my pocket and I'm well, holding up a 4S. Well, let me ask you this. I, I mean, I'm in the shooting mode and all I see is normal stabiliz stabilization and burst. And then for there's, scene, you could do auto, action, whiteboard, night, you know, all the standards there. There's no uh, macro mode? I don't, I don't see it. Oh, maybe that's why when you show the pictures, maybe it goes into that mode when you get close automatically. I mean... Let's see. I'm looking up right now. No, here. and then there's face detection. There's there's a there's a face detection thing, but that's it. I mean, there's no there's no setting. I don't see anything. Oh, okay. It must do it automatically. I mean, those pictures look great up close. Yeah, it's a phenomenal a phenomenal camera. It is. But in my opinion, that's really. I mean, are, are you gonna have any apps on that phone? Well, that that is the the worst part of it. There's really no apps. Yeah. No, it's so, doing. It, I believe it's doing all the aperture on its own. It's able to kind of do it that way. Yeah, I'm looking too here. Here's what I like about. I have an LX5 from Panasonic. I like the fact that I can change the aspect ratio of the picture from four three to sixteen nine, which is really what I default most of the pictures and the video that Calm you saw on the Straight Talk experiment video. I shot that uh, with the LX5, and it did a really nice job with that. So I like that choice with that, and it also what you have to try out. What I thought was really cool about this is you can switch between time shift video or still shooting. So you can do a time shift video with that, and I think pick the faces out of the time shift that you want, or the picture at least. I don't know how deep that goes, but that's a pretty unique uh, counter to what Samsung does with the, the best shot that Colm has on his Note 2. No, it, it's, it's actually very impressive. Now, uh, my biggest criticism is the apps. There's really no apps for this thing, and one of the... The simplest of apps that's pretty much available on every single platform, including uh, the older BlackBerry phones, uh, Windows Mobile. I mean, every phone platform has had this, and that's a speed test app to see what your 3G or 4G, speed, uh, 4G speeds are. That does not exist on this phone. Maybe Calm rooted it. Maybe, maybe he did. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what he did, and, and it caused it. But really, there's no speed test app. Um, a lot of the a lot of the standard apps, and even like. Rip, you know, not the not the official app, but maybe something that does the exact thing. Uh, those apps do not exist either. So the app store is very underdeveloped. Uh, but again, it's a it's a very new platform. It's a very new phone. Nobody, if you're a developer, are you going to take the risk and start developing for BlackBerry when you don't know if they're going to be here in a couple of months? Uh, I'm hoping over the next you know three to six months, we're going to see much more development into as far as the app side goes with this. You hope. Very nice. Look, I'm looking on Amazon right now, and I uh, it, it's a pretty attractive, no contract price. Which I'm confused by AT and C whether I'm buying it 
uh, no contract to, or no commitment, but extending my contract. That's the thing I fell into with the iPhone 5. Or if it's truly no commitment and I can still get out of my contract in May, uh, 529 for a full price phone is not too bad right now, especially when you're getting expandable storage and you're also getting uh, the ability to swap out your batteries, which is important to you, Colin. But 529 is not too bad for buying it outright. No, I think. I think uh, four fifty should be the price. Really, you think it should compete with Nokia with the Lumia nine twenty, which is four fifty on uh, no commitment. Yeah. So, would you pick this over an iPhone four S, Andrew? Yes. That I'm- yes. Really? There are no, yeah, no way. I would. I would. I, um, listen, I personally would because I, I really like the phone. If you're an everyday person, well, also you know what, an enterprise, I think this is a much better phone. The email service is phenomenal. Uh, I think they do these little things be- much better when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, enterprise better than iPhone I- iOS. But if if you're an everyday person and you want apps and that's what everybody wants, I cannot recommend it to you. I cannot say this is the phone you want to get because the apps don't exist. You know we're being featured again on the front page of UStream, so I just wanted to nice. welcome all the new viewers. Thank you. Uh, one thing I want to mention to all the viewers, the ones that have been here and the ones the ones that have been here through me struggling to bring the entire setup into the living room uh, and everybody else who's joining us now. If you want to check out what the BlackBerry Z10 experience is, I think I have the website correct, blackberry.com forward slash glimpse to actually look and see what Andrew is doing with the Z10, not what he's doing, but you know how he, how you use a Z10 without having to go into the AT&T store or actually physically you know you can it's a pretty good way to do it actually you go on your mobile phone on your iphone and i i played with it last week and it was kind of cool to to get a tour and figure out how the swipes work and the gestures um still on the fence about it but that's that's a good way for people to see uh if it's something they prefer over the iphone i just tweeted another photo i just took with it so I'll, i'll put that up too nice very nice so um like we said earlier, Andrew's a huge star now. He's a uh, part of the mainstream media. Yeah. He has he has about 126 haters on YouTube as as we count right now, which is you know actually the measurement of success in social media. Andrew, people are very so, upset with me. I'm so excited. I'm shaking my leg. That's why the camera's moving. <laughs> so, it, it, Carl, uh, uh, it, just sorry to kind of go back. Uh, this is another example of the uh, the, the oh, camera. Wow. So that's that's I, I've come in, but you can see the entire background is blurred. Yeah, it's definitely doing it on its own. That is, I mean, it's a great camera. I'm yeah. not going to deny that at all. Yeah, sorry, Michael. But you still go with the iPhone, Colm. You would not. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, until they speak- build an ecosystem, of course. Right now, speaking, if I had to... speaking on apps, though. You're not speaking well, I'm about speaking to, If anyone came to me and said, Colm, I need to buy a phone, what do I buy? Like Coco. He's a friend of the, the network. Uh, if he came to me and said, "What should I buy?" I would say, "You go buy the latest iPhone, or even buy an iPhone five if that's too much. Get an iPhone four S." Well, for Coco, I would recommend that Fisher Price phone that that kids get kids buy. Oh, well, that is your opinion. No, he's an idiot. It's okay. Um, yeah, because well, I mean, if they're gonna they're gonna have the best experience on that, it's it's easy to use, and there's a lot of apps. Yeah, true. All right, so. I cut myself off, but I'm, I was Sorry. talking about how we have a huge star on the show right now, Call me. Uh, Andrew Zarian yeah. is now the mainstream, covered by NC, NBC, The Verge, everybody else. Or should I say he's actually covered via Paul Therod, who's on uh, What the Tech every week with Andrew. Uh, we talked last week about an always connected Xbox and what we thought about it. And uh, I read Paul's blog. I listened to What the Tech. And it gave me a little bit of a different, and even some of his tweets, uh, it gave me a different take on it. But... That's not the big news. The big news is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you break it, Colm. Not me. I'm breaking big news. Yeah, you've been making fun of him about it before the show. You might as well talk about it. That next Xbox was announced here on the GFU network. Is that what you're trying to say? What are you trying to say? I, I probably would have did a better job leading into it, but yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, Andrew. I should have done okay. it. Okay, go ahead. He, he I didn't know what you were talking about. Are you ready? Go. Yeah, I'm ready. Andrew's ready. Andrew's ready to ask him some questions. All right. I'll, I'll do it. You All do right. it. He, he's out of it today. Oh my God. I can't he has too much wrestling on his mind. 
I moved an entire studio in 10 minutes out to here to the living room. You can't even like look up the, the link that Andrew gave you, but that's fine. I'm going to get to it. Go to winsupersite.com where Paul talks about Xbox versus Next and Always Online. The outrage real and imagine the wake of an Xbox versus Next revelation. Um, one of the Microsoft Studios, uh, the, actually the Microsoft Studios creative director, Adam Orth, I think I pronounced that right. In the indirectly confirmed reports, this coming device will require an always-on internet connection in the admittedly bizarre series of Twitter tweets. Uh, quote, Adam, sorry I don't get the drama around having an always-on console, he wrote. Every device now is always on. That's the world we live in. Then using a Twitter hashtag, he punctuated his point with a comment that I think really set people off. This is quoting Paul on his blog. The quote of Adam was, Hashtag deal with it. So uh, he had to. Yeah, he sounds like Cole. Uh, he had yeah, to. Exactly. He had to deal with. He had to apologize for that. But the bigger story is that you guys actually broke on what the tech that there will be an Xbox special event May twenty first, I believe. Yes, May twenty first. Right, and and I believe he confirmed that date. I I listen. I. It, it, this is the interesting part of all this. Uh, when when Paul and I discuss the Xbox, we really it, it's not like we we have a discussion beforehand saying like oh listen this and this and this is happening let's not talk about this we we've probably in in the last three years that I've done a show with Paul it, it's come up once and I, I totally understood uh, when we were talking about it we were just speculating and it's quite possible that many of the speculations that that we we said uh, are true. You knew about the next so, X. So, is it, you didn't tell so me. Is just a lucky guess, or is it something that just... No, not out? a lucky guess at all. It, 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 it just came out. Well, apparently oh, okay. it got a lot of people mad, so that means they are 100% right. <laughs> so the people with him... You know, I don't want to get Paul in trouble, and I don't want to bring up anything that, that's maybe squashed at this point, but is Microsoft mad at you guys? Are they upset? N not that I know of. <laughs> It would have been better saying no comment. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I see. I see, you should have just said no comment. Listen, no, as far as far as I go, it's all speculation. Um, I, 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 things could change. I don't know. I don't have any information in front of me as far as dates go. But, um, but a lot of this stuff is also common sense. I mean, if you're talking about. Uh, the direction of the company, you could assume, uh, and, and you can make a very, very left field guess and, and kind of hit the nail on the head with this. Uh, they're, they're talking about always connected. I don't necessarily think that's an awful thing. A lot of people are very upset that the fact that the Xbox may or may not always connect, but we don't know exactly what always connected means. It could just mean a heartbeat. It doesn't necessarily, it's not going to impact your gameplay, but it may need a heartbeat in order to do a lot of the updates. A, a, a device like a Roku is always connected. A device like the Apple TV is always connected. Google TV always connected. So uh, this is the this is the evolution of these devices. Um, I don't necessarily feel that always on means you need to be connected at all times to a server. I think, in my opinion, and I don't know anything. I'm making an opinion out. Of, you know, just taking this out from my head. Um, I believe it's probably going to be a pulse for the device. Yeah, you know, that, that Roku analogy really changed my mind about it because I was thinking, this is what scared people, the SimCity debacle. Yeah, I, I, and uh, you're 100% right. That is exactly that. why people are, are very upset at this because we saw what always on means and it didn't necessarily work out for EA. I think the always on thing hasn't even been defined yet. Always on, I think more leans towards your Roku's, more leans towards your Apple TVs, or even the current Xbox 360. It, it logs you in, it tells you what friends are online, and you go to your Netflix or you go whatever. You can choose to play offline, but it's giving you that online presence to let you know, Calm, Andrew, whoever's playing uh, these games, or they're online doing whatever. Wait, uh, wait. Now so they, need I, to, they need to. Go ahead. But if I'm ready and I'm, I just moved to my new house and the internet hasn't been installed yet, and I have the the new Xbox that Andrew already has and has been playing for days, uh, would I be able to play Madden if I don't have internet yet? We don't know. I mean, we don't know what that means, and this is the thing. Uh, we're, we're speculating, and people are very upset over over a 
a, a quote and we don't know what that quote it means exactly i in my opinion i don't think it's going to affect your gameplay it may affect many of the services that you need uh to have a a true xbox experience yeah by let's, services i mean let's talk about let's talk about xbox music let's talk about xbox video let's talk about uh any of the apps that you're going to be running on that thing can you imagine running an iphone without an ipod an ipad let's take for example running an ipad without an internet connection what would your experience be like then compared to having an internet connection guarantee you it's not going to be great well, Still, was you're able to play the games on your iPad without internet. Yeah, well, you can play the games. Here, here's what I, I thought about this whole thing of, of all the experiences with the 360 and how they're going to be almost alike with, with the next Xbox, whatever they're going to call it. Uh, how many years, Colm, has EA released Madden, NCAA, or even the 2K version with NBA 2K that the first week or two or even month or two the servers go down. There's lag when we play Madden. The only time we really get a great experience is after the season's over. So isn't that kind of like an always-on connection with the game? Yeah, I didn't think of it that way, Michael. You are right and, on with that. And, you know, Microsoft's not completely to blame because a lot of these games have their own servers as well. And if anything lags, I think this next Xbox, Microsoft is going to get the brunt of all the complaints when it could be an EA, a 2K, or even, uh, say, a Minecraft server or something that's completely separate from your Microsoft Xbox Live account. Well, here's the problem, though, is that, I mean, if you look at, like, the number one game in the world right now, World of Warcraft, 10 million accounts, you can only play that game when that server, when you connect to that server and they have the servers running. And then I believe it was, what, every Tuesday, was it, Andrew, or Monday, where they took the servers down? I believe it was Tuesday. Tuesdays and they take them down and no one can play and people would I remember when I was so addicted to that game that I would like sit there and wait for the server to come on but, but let me ask you this okay let, let's talk about the average consumer okay the average consumer does not understand that they don't understand right. that servers go down they don't understand that um, right. you know some some game I, it, in my opinion I, I'm gonna see a many developers developing games that require an always-on feature that require an internet connection that that's how I see this playing out now I don't know if every developer is going to start doing that, every app developer uh, app developer, and every uh, game developer, but I do see many of them going in this direction. So if you're Microsoft and you're in the scenario where some games have a connection and some games don't require a connection, what are you going to say to your, to your, you know, the people purchasing your product? Some games might work and some games might just hook it up and yeah. see what happens. No, you're going to say, see what you're, saying. you're going to turn yeah. around and say, you know what, we're going to require you to have some sort of heartbeat, some sort of pulse. To, to keep it going. I, I, I and Again, this is all speculation. This may not right. be 100% true. Well, apparently, you know all about the next Xbox. That's what I'm I don't know here. Paul, Paul has it, apparently. He's playing the new Call of Duty on it. The Xbox, uh, and, and I guess I, I'll tell you guys the name of it. You guys want oh, to know the name? The Xbox, yeah, the Xbox 1290. 1290, you heard That's it here first on T4 Show. Thank you. All I want to know, I don't want any more hate comments. I, I that's what I want to say. Have you updated uh, to look at the hate comments? A la Ed Harris from the Office. Look at all the comments that on. I love that when he did that. He was looking at comments and responding to comments on the Office. I mean, I got called a homosexual a lot, but other than that, I'm okay with it. No, there's no like. In reality, there's no. Uh, there's a couple of FUs, F you and the horse that you rode in on. I don't. I don't even know why. This person is talking, talking about Nazis underneath him and how he loves the uh, Third Reich book on Audible. It's great. Um, it, like, well, I, I don't understand. It's weird. Like, one of the things that we were discussing. It. You actually made it. You actually actually made it. Now have. people hate you. I'm very proud of this moment, actually. It's awesome. I'm very proud of you. Like, I'll give you an example, Michael. We were talking about um, the, the, ga the gaming market, right? And, yeah. and I agree with Paul on this. He said that apps, like Facebook apps have the potential of reaching far more people and making far more money than a game for the Xbox. Somebody brought up, you know, Black Ops 2, which Black Ops 2 made about, you know, two and a half billion dollars. But that's an exception to the rule. When you're talking about apps that are that are in the app store, they're making tons more money, these app developers, than a than a game developer where you could put out one game a year that's going to be a huge sellout. Compared to putting out, you know, five or six apps a year that are going to make you some money. 
So I think the market, the marketplace for smaller applications, smaller games, is far larger than the traditional gaming platform. And, and I know a lot of the hardcore gamers hate to hear that, but that's the reality of it. You need to bring in casual gamers to purchase an Xbox. That's the future of this device. So you know what? If you have casual games on an Xbox that require an internet connection, and that's going to be the majority of these apps in a, in a Microsoft app store, I'm just throwing out an idea here. You're going to kind of say, well, you know what? Your device needs to be connected. Yep. It's going to be interesting because everything's leaned towards uh, mobile gaming, iOS, Android, uh, iPads, and, and other tablets. But now, uh, E3 this year is going to be real interesting with the PS4, with the, X, the next Xbox uh, probably being more displayed and more details coming out on that. What we're not talking about, and we talked about two episodes ago, I believe, was the cost of these games, the cost of these games or what they're going to strip out of the uh, out of the Xbox and the PS4 games and what they're going to do. I, I think it's going to be a 50-50 split between the base game and the DLC. You're going to potentially pay around maybe 60 or 70 for the game and another 50 to 60 to get the full experience of the game. That's that's where I think everything is heading. So it's going to be interesting to see if they get they got to bring something yeah, uh, to, that's a possibility, well, Michael. Um, the other possibility I see is, um, well, you know, another thing is I, I don't expect there to be backwards compatibility with the next generation Xbox with prior games. Not, that, that sucks, and that sucks. I well, hate that. And dude. this is their response to that. They're putting out a $99 Xbox, an updated Xbox, uh, so you have some sort of backwards compatibility. So when the new Xbox is out, the 360 will still be in existence as a $99 uh, newer device. I, I still don't see that. I, I still don't see why. I still don't see why the MVP 2005 is not compatible with my Xbox 360. <laughs> yeah. I still haven't gotten over that. I, I don't yeah. understand. What we're talking about. We're not talking about going from unless they are going to go to a Blu-ray format like PS3 or P the PS4 or whatever that's going to do. But I don't see if a, a data disc and a data disc is a data disc. It doesn't matter. I don't understand why a more powerful processor cannot play last generation's games. Does well, that make well, sense? Well, let me ask you this. Would you be upset if you had, for example, with, with, would you be upset if you had access to games that you purchased online? You mean digital? Digital. So let, let me, I'm just bringing up a scenario. So let's say the next version of the Xbox, uh, every game you buy, you also get access to a digital copy in the cloud. Right. I only want my games. Okay, so you get a digital copy in the cloud that you could download every time. You know, let's say you get a new device and you want backwards compatibility. The next generation CDs are not going to be backwards compatible, but your game that you bought, you know, four years right. ago and have a physical, you know, optical drive for that, uh, an optical disc for that. Yeah. You have access to that game on the cloud, and you could just download it to your Xbox and play it on the cloud. Well, That's there's going to be two like. things about that. The number one thing is there's there's not. Well, there may be trade-in value, but what happens to that license when you go to trade it in GameStop and you have a digital version? Do they shut it down? Sure. Or has, has I mean, gatekeeper there. They're working on that. They haven't. Figured There's a lot that of confusion with that. that. I mean, if you're talking about a physical media and a digital, like a like iTunes type thing with the digital copy, you're going to have to do something to shut it down with DRM. So we're not just passing games back and forth to each other and doing it that way. True. Well, you're going to have oh. pirates regardless, but. Well, they, yeah. they've got By the way, Forbes, Forbes.com just picked up the story. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. There you go. Are you going to yeah. be on, like, the nightly news with Brian Williams tonight? Like, I comment on the next Xbox? We're on Forbes. I mean, you did break the logo, did you not? Yeah. I, I, I hope you take John yes. Ratt Rattinger's place on CNBC. It would be better if you were there anyway. He probably won't like hearing that, but that's okay. All right, so we'll figure it out. We're going to be covering this probably week to week. If Andrew's, if Andrew's not booked on The Tonight Show or one of the other late shows or something like that, or if he's not going to defect to the verge, he'll be covering it week by week with us too. So will any of that happen? Are you already hired? Uh, I'm actually a writer for uh, The New Tonight Show. Already sell out the AOL? Yeah. You already bought us? Already. We're done. Sorry. This is your last week. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be covering that. So, Colm, you put a uh, you put a gaming mouse in the uh, yes. show notes. This uh, yeah, company. I... What? Go ahead, talk about it. No, no, go ahead. Lead me in. Your your bandwidth is dropping, so uh, let Michael go in, and I'll reconnect with Mine you. Mine is. Yeah. Oh, uh, 
His router's going out too. All right, now Razer's well known for their gaming uh, products, so they they came out. I, I think they have a bunch of keyboards. I'm not a PC gamer, but I know they have systems, they have peripherals, they have software, and they also have accessories. Uh, now they have the Razer, and it's it's spelled R A Z E R. The Razer Mamba. So it, it says free the frag. Uh, it's a gaming mouse. It's pretty pretty cool looking. Yep. Colin could probably speak more on this because I'm used to using a, a physical controller with my Xbox and PS3, so I haven't used a, a gaming mouse and a keyboard combination in forever. Right. Have, you, have you, Andrew, do you game like that? Uh, I used to. I mean, I had a gaming mouse when I was playing Warcraft, but I, I'm so out of the gaming loop where nothing matters at this point. They actually right, do well, have I a got console. It. They have a controller. They have all kinds of controllers. These look good, but I know you want to well, talk about the mouse. Yeah, well, I got the gaming mouse because not for gaming. So I'm not really going to speak on a gaming. I did it for uh, some of you know that I do a lot of graphic design work and the precision I need sometimes. Like I decided, why not try a gaming mouse with what I do? And I have to admit that it's really nice that I can set the precision of it. Uh, the, it comes with great Mac and PC software for it. Uh, you can set the light color that it has here. And also this part comes off, which you have to hit this button which I didn't prepare and do. There's a little release thing here, which you probably have to take time to figure out. Well, I did it. So now it's a wireless mouse as, as well. So I can use that on the wireless mouse. Or it also has this uh, nice little display here. That you basically take it when you're done, pop it on. So now it sits like that. Oh, that is, that's cool. And then I'm dropping it again. <laughs> then I'm plugging it back in. Okay, that even lights up. You can pick whatever color you want. You pop this on it. Hopefully, I didn't break it. Yeah, I did. And basically, your charge indicator is right there, and it goes like that, and it plugs right in USB. I have to admit, Michael, and um, I'm coming from a Logitech MX. This is now just moved to my other computer. Uh, I love this mouse, but it just didn't have the precision. And also, this one feels better. It's a little bit lower down with your hand and your palm. So I highly recommend it. How much? All right, so it is a little pricey. Uh, <laughs> retails for one twenty nine, but it oh is on Amazon. God. It's on Amazon Prime right now for one hundred and four dollars. Okay, Andrew, would you yeah. pay one hundred and four dollars for a mouse? I mean, I paid. I paid like seventy nine bucks for a mouse. So it's, it's worth it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've I've paid it when when I was playing a lot of you know PC based games, but uh, right now I wouldn't. It's wireless now, or it can be wired. I'm using it's so nice. What are you doing with it? I'm using it mostly for InDesign and Photoshop work. And do you feel that it helps you out? Oh yes, because I'm able. Before it's like I, you have to really take the time though in the settings and really like go in there and tweak it so you get and feel how you want to move your wrist. Like if you're someone who, who wants to and you move and you have a heavy hand, you want to slow it down. But if you're someone who makes slight moves, you can go a little bit faster. Well, something just blew my mind. If you go uh, to the site, if you go to RazorZone.com, R-A-Z-E-R, uh, they have the Razor Artemis Concept Controller. Have you seen that? No way. For the game? Yeah. You put your iPad in there. Yeah. It's a concept. The Razor Artemis Concept Controller is a console that features a custom futuristic design crafted exclusively for Mech. Oh, it's for Mech Warrior Online. Oh, I thought it was for Artemis the game. Damn. But if you if you're a fan of Mech Warrior, it actually looks like the old Steel Battalion controller you got with the Xbox game. It looks like that. It looks pretty damn cool. It's a concept controller, so I don't know if you can buy it. No, it's not available yet. Oh well. Okay. So speaking of video games, I anyway, that's for me that's too expensive, but if you use it like that, 104 bucks, I guess, is okay. Um let me go to the next thing. We're still on video games. Uh, one of your favorite games that you were talking about at, at PAX East 2013 was a game called Nun Attack, Colm. Yeah, this is a Vita game, Michael. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, we went over and saw that they had two games. There's one game called Zombies 2 that was very interesting. And then this game, Nun Attack, we got a bunch of codes that we're actually giving away. So tweet either myself culmination or michael at michael mana and tell us you would love a copy of none attack and we'll send you a code uh we're going to give them away first come first serve so if you want it now tweet us uh what this game is is there's it's four player i believe you can play i'm not sure if it's online co-op or not i know i was playing it there co-op 
And it's basically um, sort of like Castle Cat Crashly, so Andrew will Ooh, like it. Ooh, I want to yeah. code. I'm going to play it. There you go. And it has the whole RPG leveling up, and you go in the different levels and try, you try to like three star it type of thing. So, and, and it's like- it's got a lot of humor, and especially anything that's on the Vita, Vita, both you and I support. Yeah, absolutely, and it is available uh, for Android as well. It's available that's right, for I, and, and I think it's on the iOS. App Store. Yeah, iOS yeah. and Android, and uh, Android and iOS. He did some. Now, can you games. can you cross save between platforms? We asked about that last week about another game, can, or is it just once you're on PSN and you get your achievements and your save, you can't yeah. cross platform yeah. off of that, right? Right. It's all in whichever platform it's on. Okay. Right. Now, that looks good. I got a code. I got a code. I'm going to try it out, but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get an update. Uh, we got about, what, a half a dozen, maybe eight codes, something like that. Yeah, we have about eight codes. Uh, we want to thank Zach uh, over at Triple Point for sending those over to us. Yeah, Triple Point was the company that sent me a lot of the Nyko stuff. They were very good to me. It was it was really yeah. cool. I got to I got to reconnect with Zach. If you have his email, call him, give it to me and I'll uh, Oh yeah. send him off an email or give him a call. A lot of those Triple Point guys play on Xbox Live too. It's amazing that you run into the PR people to actually back up uh, you know what they work with and actually play video games. You would think that of course, you should play video games if you sell video game products, but you'd be amazed, right? <laughs> All right, so next we're going to go, this is the final thing, we're going to go with our weekly Netflix pick. And, of course, uh, this episode, like the last episode, is brought to you by Netflix. Uh, Colm, what is your Netflix? I, I'm looking at it right here. I'm trying to bring it up right. online. I'm I try to bring up one that uh, not a lot of people talk about. I know it's probably, some people have seen it, maybe, but this movie will make your head explode. If you want a movie that afterwards you just like, it's God. so much and you need to talk to someone who else has seen it, you need to ch- check this out. It goes in the a lot about time travel. So if you, you're interested at all in time travel, I highly recommend Primer. I'm looking at it right now. I got three stars. So, uh, but Those people don't know anything. I guess not. Well, my pick this week is Batman Under the Red Hood. Oh, yeah, you might who would have not? Who would have thought? Exactly. Yeah. I, I just think it's just an amazing movie. I'm going to ra- I'm gonna rate it again and give it five stars right here. I'm going to read it. I didn't do this last week. There's a mystery afoot in Gotham City when a shadowy, a shadowy vigilante. What is wrong with me? I can't say anything. Who's the voice of the Red Hood? Do you know? Do you know? Jensen Ackles from uh, from Supernatural. That's correct. And who is uh, Dick Grayson? <laughs> uh, that's that. That had to be a joke. Uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Yes. <laughs> really? Is that true? Yeah. 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 Oh, right. This is the best one, Andrew. Yeah, this is the best one, except for the fact that I, you know, I'm still hung up on the fact that Kevin Conroy is the best voiceover actor for Batman. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, of course, he is my best. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't voice over this, and then Peter Weller voices over Dark Knight Returns Part One and Part Two, which I, I actually like that voice a little bit better than the one in Under Red Hood. But all the all the action, everything. Uh, I told you before, my girlfriend wonders why I watch these every night, and I tell her. We didn't grow up with this kind of animated uh, stuff for Batman. This no. darker, more violent, where people die, things happen, more realistic. Uh, you know, like, I mean, we're lucky to even get the trilogy that we got and not left with the Batman Forevers and the Batman and Robin movies. <laughs> but, you know, I watch these and I'm still amazed at the fact that we have this kind of, you know, the Batman stuff coming to life. So that's why I always watch it every night. Yeah, maybe. And- Maybe a little obsessive, but that's other people's opinion. But if you want to be just like Michael and watch Batman Under the Red Hood, remember to go to Netflix.com slash GFQ and you get not seven days, not 14 days, but 30 days free. I have a and pick, too. Cancel. You do? I do. Oh, I do. Well, what, what is the movie that you would like to tell it's us It's not about? a movie. Documentary. TV show. TV show. Fine. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And it's oh, coming yeah. back. I, 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 my brother, my younger brothers really liked the show, so I gave it a chance to watch. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love the show. It is one of the funniest things I've ever watched in my life. Doesn't matter. You don't have to be high or drunk to get it. Uh, it is just brilliantly, brilliantly funny. Uh, and every character is likable. I agree. And it, but it's oh, not yeah. always in Philadelphia. I've lived there for a few years. No, it's not. <laughs> 
That is a great show. Yeah, you know, let's talk about TV shows real quick. Not only that, but new episodes of Rust Development is going to be a Netflix exclusive. Uh, you have House of Cards. I haven't started watching that yet, but I have a lot of great reviews on that. Um, yeah, Netflix is great. Eight bucks a month. I just looked at my year end summary. I'm turning my taxes in and everything. It's mm -hmm. so I'm looking at every quarter just for Netflix. It's like what twenty four bucks. I'm like, wow, that that's like the best investment for eight bucks a month to just stream. And if you want the physical media, you can go out there and, and they have tiers for that too. But I recommend starting off with just the streaming. You'll get plenty of movies, TV shows, documentaries, uh, cartoons for the kids, everything. I think it's a great investment. Oh, I think it's worth it. I mean, if you get 30 days free too and you don't have it right now, you need to just go to netflix.com slash GFQ. Thank you, Colin, for giving the website twice. Like he's all proud of himself. Yeah. Look at him. Wow. You didn't well, I just want everyone to remember Netflix.com slash GFQ. Oh, what if you're sitting I'm around and you can't remember it? I'm just amazed you finally joined us for the show. Thank you. Oh, I've been participating? I had to pick you up I had to pick up where you left off, Colm. You didn't. You were watching a baseball game again. We caught you. I saw That's you watching a baseball game. It's not true. It's on the right side now, not the left. No, this is where I got to look for everything that's going on with the show. Make sure everything's okay. All right, so we're going to end episode 137. Thanks for everybody for their patience who, who joined us live in the chat room. We, we got off to kind of a late start, a half hour, because of all the technical issues here. But I'm going to go out and buy a new router, and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll solve the problem. Uh, but you can follow me at Michael Matty. You can follow Colm at Culmination. You can also follow Andrew at Andrew Zarian. Or you can go to the NBC site or any of their big sites that Andrew will now be covered by. And you can also... Uh, What's your gamer tag? Call culmination. I'm culmination everywhere. everywhere. I'm culmination. I'm. We get it. I'm culmination. He's culmination. I'm T4 show host on Xbox. What are you, Andrew? X Andranic X. There you go. Play us in a game. Maybe I'll defend the title of Madden. Who knows? Might happen uh, soon. Oh. Uh, I talked what? about it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, see us next week, April 15th, which is the most unhappy day of the year, tax time. That is the tax deadline, so make sure to get your taxes in. But for now, for everybody here at the T4 Show, thank you and best of luck in all your future GFQ endeavors. <laughs>